All right, now we're looking at section 1.2, an application of inductive reasoning and number patterns. So a number sequence is a list of numbers having a first number, a second, and so on and so forth. And each part of the uh, sequence is called a term. An arithmetic sequence has a common difference between successive terms, Why a geometric sequence has a common ratio. So we want to use the method of successive differences to determine the next number in each sequence. The way we do this is we want to write each of the numbers with some space in between. Like so. And we are trying to find the next number, so we're going to put a blank there. Between 3 and 14, there's 11. Between 14 and 31, there's 17. Between 31 and 52, 23. 83 minus 54 is 29. And between 83 and 118, it's 35. So we're just subtracting each of those. And what we need to find out is what's between 118 and the next number. Well, looking at this pattern, I really can't predict it. So we're going to keep going. Now we get 6 for this one, for this one, for this one, and this one. So we know that the next number has 6 in between it. So this number right here would be 35 plus 6, which is 41. And then that means that between 118 and the number we're trying to find is 41. So if you just do 118 plus 41, you get 159. All right, let's do one more of those. Again, you want to write them out with a little space in between. And we are looking for this last number. So let's start off by finding the difference between each one of these, which is 10, 24, 44, 70, and 102. <coughs> um, and we don't know how much is between 251 and the unknown number, so I'm going to put a blank there. Now let's do the next step. We get 14, 20, 26, 32, <clears throat> and we don't know how much there is between these two, so I'll put a blank there. And we need to continue until they're all the same, so finally we get sixes here. So six plus six, or six plus 32 would make this a 38. 102 plus 38 would make this 140. And then 251 plus 140 is 391. And voila, we have the number we were trying to find. In the last section, we learned about the Gaussian method. And this is essentially what we did. Um, where n was our last number in the sequence. So we divided it by 2 to get how many pairs there were. And then we added one to it to figure out um, what what the each pair added up to. So that's like a condensed version of the um, Gaussian method. So for this one it would just be S equals 500 times 501 all over 2 and that works out to be 125,250. All right, and the next one you see that it's skipping, it's every other one. It goes 1, 3, 5, etc. So we use a slightly different formula here. Um, 
the sum is equal to n squared. But n is, um, well to find it you add 1 to the last term and then divide by 2. So 49 plus 1 is 50 divided by 2 would be 25. So my sum is 25 squared or 625. Triangular numbers are built like this. They come from the natural numbers um, if you just add the next number. So you do 1 and then 1 plus 2 is 3 and then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 and so on and so forth. And if you add those together you get the sequence 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. If you use a little bubble for each one, starting with one bubble, and then move up to 3, and then 6, you see that you can form a triangle with each one of them, hence giving them the name triangular numbers. Um, another one are the square numbers. The square numbers are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and you can see, you know, if you have 9 dots, that makes a square, or 16 dots, or 25 dots. With the pentagonal number sequence, which goes 1, 5, um, I think it's 12, yeah, 12, uh, 22, and 35, you can take, um, as you can see, you start with one dot, it's not really anything, but if you have five of them, you can make a pentagon. If you have a 12 of them, you can make two pentagons, and so on and so forth making them the pentagonal number sequence, 1, 5, 12, 22, 35. But we also have nice concise formulas to find the triangular, square, and pentagonal numbers. But even if you didn't have those formulas, if you're given a table like this one, um, you can see that there's a pattern. For example, I might not know what the next square number is, but I can see how to get it. It would be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, which is equal to 16. I might not know what the next square number is, but I know it's 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, which of course works out to be 25. Pentagonal numbers, you might not know the next one, but you know well, you can guess that since there's 3 in between 1 and 4, that you would just add um, 7, because there's 3 between 4 and 7, and that gets you 12. The next one would be 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10. Add it all together, you get 22. The next one would be 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13 which is 35. For hexagonal, you might guess that the first one is 6, which is 1 plus 5. They go 1 plus 2, 1 plus 3, 1 plus 4, so this one must be 1 plus 5. The next one will be 1 plus 5. Well, there's four numbers in between 5 and 1, so the next one is probably 9. So that'll give you, um, let's see, 15. <clears throat> and then the next one would be 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 13, which is 28. And the next one would be 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 13 plus 17. and that equals 45. So we're using inductive reasoning here to fill this chart out and we didn't need any formulas we just needed to see how the pattern worked. Alright, here is a little interesting thing. If you take the first triangular number um, which is 1 and you divide it by 3 you get 0 
with a remainder of 1. The next one is 3, so 3 divided by 3. Um, would be 1 with a remainder of 0. Next one is 6. 6 divided by 3, well I'm just going to do it like this, equals 2, remainder of 0. The next triangular number is 10. I don't know why the screen is jumping around on me. And that goes in 3 times, so with a remainder of 1. Let's look at a few more and you can see if you get the pattern. We have 15 is the next triangular number and it's 5 remainder of 0. 21 divided by 3 is 7 remainder of 0. And 28 divided by 3 is 9 remainder of 1. So you can see the pattern goes 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 and so forth, like binary numbers. <coughs> In addition to triangular, um, square, and pentagonal numbers, there's um, hexagonal, hep heptagonal, and octagonal numbers. And I've given you their formulas. So we're just going to use their formulas to, um, oops, I know there's one little mistake here. This should say 10 and 12, because that's what number that one is. All right, so the 11th heptagonal number is um, going to be HP of 11, which is 11 times 5 times 11 minus 3 all over 2. So you do a quick calculation with that. 55 minus 3 is 52 times 11. Divide that by 2 and it's 286. seventh hexagonal number should be uh, H7, H sub 7, and it's going to be 7 times 4 times 7, uh, minus 2 all over 2. Get that written down for you. <laughs> so we're going to do H sub 7, which is 7 times 4 times 7 minus 2 all over 2. It's 91. The 12th octagonal number would be O sub 12. So it's 12 times. 6 times 12 minus 4 all over 2 and that one is 408. Make sure you follow the order of operations there. You need to multiply this first, then subtract, and then multiply by 12 and then divide by 2. So if you're getting it wrong, it's probably an order of operations issue. Alright, that's 1.2.